What is the Windrush scandal? Welcome to the Sankofa Pan African series. Please subscribe and turn on your notification buttons if you haven't done so. Um, we'd also like to appeal to you to support us by signing on as a member of this channel and pledging a token um, amount to us monthly through Patreon. That way, you can be sure that we'll continue to bring you um, the, the kind of topics that we deal with on this channel. Thank you. Before we go on to talk about the Windrush uh, scandal, let's first talk about Windrush and the Windrush uh, generation. Now, Empire Windrush was the name of a ship which arrived at Tilbury Docks in the United Kingdom on the 22nd of uh, June, 1948. It arrived in Britain carrying about 492 men, women, and children from the Caribbean who had been invited by the British government to come and work in Britain. You will recall that 1948 was a few years after the Second World War, which left Britain with a lot of destroyed infrastructure and a population that was struggling to rebuild itself. Thousands of buildings had been bombed, houses were demolished, and they all needed to be rebuilt. The workforce had also been depleted by the war. Now, the British government had then gone on endless campaigns to invite people from the Caribbean to come and work in Britain. This was a call that most people in the Caribbean were willing to answer because slavery and colonization had left most of the countries, um, of those countries, uh, very poor. In the Caribbean, many young men and women had also served uh, in the British Army, uh, in the British Armed Forces, because at the time, many Caribbean countries were still under British rule and they were not yet independent. So the people who went to Britain from the Caribbean were from countries which were part of the Commonwealth of Nations or the British Commonwealth of Nations. Now, the, the Commonwealth was supposed to be a free association of sovereign states, which included the United Kingdom and a number of its former colonies. Many people who went to answer the call for employment in Britain went as Commonwealth citizens who were encouraged to go there to fill positions as uh, bus drivers, um, nurses, um, and other jobs that needed to be filled because there was a, a, a labor shortage. Now, the Commonwealth was and still is supposed to be an association of countries tied together by friendship and practical cooperation who acknowledged the British monarch as the symbolic head of the association. In reality, though, the Commonwealth was an evolutionary outgrowth of the British Empire. In, in addition to being uh, Commonwealth citizens, the British Nationality Act of 1948 defined British nationality and created the, the, the status of citizenship of the United Kingdom and colonies, CU. KC. The act came into effect on the 1st of January 1949 and formed the basis of the United Kingdom's nationality law until the British Nationality Act um, of 1981 came into force in 1983. As such, many of the Windrush generation arrived in the United Kingdom as Commonwealth citizens before British nationality and immigration law made any distinction between British subjects, whether born and living in the UK or elsewhere in, U uh, in the empire. 
According to a University of Oxford estimate, hundreds of thousands of people who were born in Commonwealth countries arrived in Britain before 1971. When the people who went from the Caribbean to work in Britain um, arrived there, they were legally permitted to stay without time limits. Even when the Immigration Act of 1971 came into force on the 1st of January 1973, the position of Commonwealth citizens was preserved. The 1971 Act preserved the right of those who had already arrived in the UK to come and go without any uh, restriction. It also recognized the right of wives and children to join their husbands and parents. Also, until 1st of August 1988, there was no restriction on the length of time a Commonwealth citizen could leave the UK while retaining the right to return. Now, the inflow of people from the Commonwealth ended with the 1971 Immigration Act when Commonwealth citizens already living in the UK were given indefinite leave to remain. So who were the Windrush generation? Now, the Windrush generation refers to the people who arrived in the UK from the Caribbean countries between 1948 and 1971. They are called the Windrush generation after the ship MV Empire Windrush, which docked in Tilbury on the 22nd of June 1948, carrying workers from Jamaica, uh, Trinidad and Tobago, and other islands to help build, uh, to help fill post war United Kingdom labor shortages. Um, so, we, what was life like for them when they arrived in Britain? you may wonder. Well, let me illustrate uh, with this poem, which was written in 1962 by uh, Professor Wale Shoyinka, the Nobel laureate, who, like the people of the Windrush generation, was a black Commonwealth citizen living in the United K uh, K Kingdom. He captures his experience with racism by a British uh, landlady. The poem is titled, telephone conversation. The price seemed reasonable. Location, indifferent. The landlady swore she lived off premises. Nothing remained but self-confession. Madam, I warned, I hate a wasted journey. I am African. Silence. Silence transmission of pressurized good breeding. Voice, when it came, lipstick coated, long gold rolled cigarette holder uh, piped. Caught, I was foully. How dark! I had not misheard. Are you light or very dark? Button A, button B. Stench of rancid breath of public hide and seek, red booth, red pillar box, red double tiered omnibus, squelching tar. It was real. Shamed by ill-mannered silence, surrender. Surrender pushed, dumbfounded to beg simplification. Considerate she was, varying the emphasis. Are you dark or very light? Revelation came. You mean like plain or milk chocolate? Her accent was clinical, crushing in its light impersonality. Rapidly, wavelength adjusted, I chose West African sepia. And as an art for thought, down in my passport. Silence for spectroscopic flight of fancy till truthfulness cl clanged her accent, hard on the mouthpiece. What's that? Conceding, 
Don't know what that is. Like brunettes. That's dark, isn't it? Not altogether. Facially, I'm brunette. But madam, you should see the rest of me. Palm of my hand, soles of my feet are a peroxide blonde. Friction caused foolishly, madam, by sitting down has turned my bottom raven black. One moment, madam. Sensing her receiver rearing on the thunderclap about my ears. Madam, I pleaded, wouldn't you rather see for yourself? So, despite being encouraged to immigrate to England by the British government to help solve the labor shortage, the Windrush generation and their children were often victims of racist abuse and negative attitudes. Like the landlady illustrated in the poem that I read, landlords refused to rent houses to them. Sometimes, even when employers were ready to give jobs, racist workers refused to work side by side with black people. Their children were bullied in schools and subjected to racist teachers and an educational system that was structured to ensure that they failed. So what was the Windrush scandal? As I said earlier, based on the British Nationality Act of 1948, everyone who was a British subject, whether they were born in the UK or a British colony, had the right to settle in the UK. This meant that the Windrush generation did not need any documents to prove their legal immigration status and were not given any even after changes in the immigration laws were passed in the early 1970s. Working age adults and many children um, traveled from the Caribbean to join parents or grandparents in the UK or traveled with their parents without their own passports. Since these people had a legal right to come to the UK, they neither needed nor were given any documents upon entry to the United Kingdom, even following changes in immigration laws in the early 1970s. Many worked or attended schools in the UK without any official documentary record of their having done so, other than the same records as any UK-born citizen. However, beginning with the Commonwealth Immigrants Act of 1962, restrictions were gradually added in a series of subsequent immigration acts. Changes were added to the law that affected the lives and relationships and family networks of people of the Windrush um, generation. The Windrush scandal refers to the political scandal surrounding the wrongful detention, um, denial of legal rights, threat of uh, deportation, and actual deportation of several of the Windrush generation from the UK by the Home Office. Many of those who were affected had been born British subjects and had arrived in the United Kingdom before 1973. In 2012, Theresa May, who at the time was the Home Secretary under the Conservative Party, introduced the hostile environment policy. By her own admission, the aim of the policy was to create a very hostile environment for illegal immigrants in Britain. Her position was in agreement with an opinion which had been put forward by a previous uh, Minister of Immigration under the Labour Party, uh, Liam Bryan, in 2007. Now, the hostile environment policy is therefore a set of administrative and legislative measures that were deliberately designed to make staying in the United Kingdom difficult for people without legal status to remain. The policy 
aimed to force people to leave the United Kingdom, even though they called it leaving voluntarily. It is a strategy whose aim is to reduce immigrants to the United uh, uh, Kingdom uh, immigration figures to the levels which the 2010 Conservative Party election manifesto had promised. By 2018, cases of wrongful detainment, deportation, and denial of benefits to majority of the Windrush generation started surfacing. The hostile environment policy has led to significant issues with the Windrush generation and other Commonwealth citizens being deported after not being able to prove their right to remain in the UK, despite being granted that right in the past. Family members born at one time or who entered Britain at a certain moment could find their legal status was fundamentally distinct from others who had moved or stayed under a different set of rules. Return to the Caribbean often meant the removal of naturalization rights that should have come with having lived in, the Brit in Britain and the established presence of other family uh, members there. Now, the historical complexity of the legal status of many migrants with a Caribbean background meant that the enforcement of hostile environment po policies caused chaos. One of the features of the hostile environment was that the people targeted would be forced to provide evidence which they had never been issued and which did not exist. They were being um, asked to demonstrate that they or their parents had lived in the United Kingdom continually since 1st of January 1973. Those who had uh, reasons to leave the country for more than two years lose rights to return based on what is now defined as continuous residency. This is in spite of the fact that the Home Office failed to maintain the records of the people to whom it granted indefinite leave to remain in the 1970s, thereby making it impossible for people to prove continuous residency. In addition, many lost their jobs or homes. Some had their uh, passports confiscated. Some were denied benefits or medical care to which they were entitled. Some long-term UK residents were refused re-entry to the UK. Measures introduced by this hostile policy included a legal requirement for landlords, employers, the NHS, charities, uh, community interest groups, uh, companies and banks to carry out ID checks and to refuse services if the individuals um, were unable to prove legal residence in the United Kingdom. Landlords, employers and others are made liable by this policy to fines of up to £10,000 if they fail to comply with these um, measures. Since 2013, people considered illegal were sometimes um, placed in detention uh, centers as preparation for their deportation. Some were deported or refused right to return to the United Kingdom from abroad. The policy also led to a more complicated application uh, process to get leave to remain. In other words, the policy condemned people, you know, but at the same time made it difficult for them to, uh, to kind of um, legalize their stay. So the policy led to a lot of complicated uh, application process to get leave to remain. And, and, and it also, uh, it, it, rather, it was more uh, intent on uh, encouraging voluntary deportation. 
around the time that the policy was introduced, there was also a sharp increase in home office fees for processing leave to remain. Or naturalization and uh, registration of citizenship applications. As a matter of fact, according to the BBC, the Home Office made a profit of more than eight hundred million pounds from nationality service between two thousand and eleven and two thousand and seventeen. So it was also a money making thing uh, for the British government. The policy has been said to be one of the harshest immigration policies in the history of the United Kingdom and has been widely criticized as inhumane, ineffective, and unlawful. The UN, the United Nations Human Rights Council, has stated that the policy has fostered xenophobia within the United Kingdom. While the Equality and Human Rights Commission has found that the policy broke equality's uh, law. Okay. In November 2020, the Equality and Human Rights Commission said that the Home Office had broken the law by failing to obey public sector equality duties, by not considering how its policies affected black members of the Windrush generation. Thanks for watching. Uh, please share our videos with your uh, with your contacts and give us a thumbs up and please support us by pledging a monthly token amount to this channel through patreon no amount you pledge is too small and your pledge will ensure that we are able to continue bringing you this channel thanks for watching